Vlogineers. Today we're going to check out America's Test Kitchen Young Chef's Club. If you like what you see, you can purchase this at the link in the description. So we're going to open it up. Oh, there's this little bottle. Bob. Hmm, wonder what this is for. Okay, so we'll probably be using this in one of our recipes. So, first we see some recipe cards. This one is Edible Spheres. It looks like this. Okay, so over here, get your spheres here. They explain the science behind how the edible spheres are formed, which is from gelatin and cold oil and flavorful liquid. Next one is the magic chocolate. Mmm, oh. this looks good. And on the back, again, they explain the science of chocolate flan cake. Ooh. Next one is the cheese or nacho cheese. To make the nachos, we're going to need one tablespoon of sodium citrate. So there's this whole pack over here. I don't know how much is in here, but this seems like a lot. Okay, this one only has six steps. So this one's probably the easiest out of all of them because the difficulty is beginner, right? On the back, they tell you the secret to melty cheese. So it's over here. And finally, cloud eggs. And on the back, they have exquisite egg science. How do egg whites go from clear liquid to a white foamy cloud-like solid after a few minutes of whipping? So again, here's the science over here. So what I like about this box is how they give you the recipes and then they tell you the science behind every dish, so that's nice. Okay, and now we have a technique card. How to crack and separate eggs. When you're cooking or baking with eggs, you usually need to start by cracking them open, unless you're boiling or steaming them. In some recipes, you will need to separate the egg yolk, the yellow part, from the egg white, the clear part. Follow the steps on the back of this card to become an expert egg cracker. I already know how to crack eggs. Okay. Oh, edible spheres. What's this? Edible spheres? Okay. So how can you use your spheres? If you have hot sauce spheres, you can put in avocado toast. If you have soy sauce spheres, you can put in steamed rice. If you have pomegranate juice spheres, you can put in vanilla ice cream. And if you have coconut milk spheres, you can put in fruit salad. So you can put this in almost anything you want as long as you have the right spheres. And what is here? There's a scientist in the kitchen. Some people call learning about the science of food and cooking molecular, molecular gastronomy. And they refer to that, to using that science in the kitchen as modernist cooking. So, there's a whole poster here. Here you can see. You know, they can't see the whole poster. Yeah, it's quite big. And then over here's a hamburger on the back. And finally, there's an editor's letter, a shopping list on the back, and uh, stickers, brother's favorite stickers. And now that we've unboxed everything in here, it's time to start cooking. Well, today, we'll be making the cheesier nacho cheese sauce and the Magic chocolate flan cake. So for the chocolate flan cake, again, this is advanced. So I know we are doing the advanced one first, but that's fine. This will take one and a half hours. And here's all the ingredients that we're going to need for the magic flan cake. I'm gonna pour a quarter cup of caramel sauce into the measuring cup. sauce gently into the pan. We're now at step number three. In a medium bowl, whisk together flour, cocoa, baking soda, and salt. While brother is whisking the flour mixture, I'm going to be adding the chocolate chips and butter into a large microwave safe bowl. Just 
melted the butter and the chocolate chips and it smells wonderful. Here we go. We got one fourth of a cup of sugar. Next we have one fourth of a cup of buttermilk. In we go. There's a handy dandy guide on how to crack an egg for people like me. So I won't but this seems pretty simple. Don't get eggshell in there, though. No! no! Oops, sorry. That's not how you do it! I accidentally just Hey! It. And now I'm going to whisk, 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 whisk until it's all combined. Spread it evenly. We've completed the cake portion of the magic chocolate flan cake and now we're moving to the flan part. And now we're just going to put it in the oven, let it bake for 50 to 55 minutes and we'll let it cool in the fridge for at least 10 hours. Next, we're going to make nachos. And these are the ingredients to make the cheesier nacho cheese sauce. Step number one is to add the water into the pan and then add the sodium citrate into the pan. So while I was taking a break upstairs, brother and my dad took over the making of the nachos and they dumped the whole pack of sodium citrate here. <sighs> and you were not supposed to dump the whole pack. You're supposed to just do like one fourth or whatever. But the point is we put too much sodium citrate in here. So now we have to quadruple the recipe. Okay, we kind of solved the problem. So from all our mess, we put it into a container. We weighed it so that we took out one fourth and then we just added some more water and more cheese. So hopefully it's okay now, but I already tasted a bit and it seems fine. I mean, it tasted like cheese. If you didn't tell me that this was messed up, I guess it worked out. What was the difficulty level? It was beginner. <laughs> and we're back. The first item we're gonna make today is cloud eggs. Our ingredients are here. This cream of tartar and four eggs. The first step is to separate the egg yolk from the egg white. So I'm once again cracking eggs. Now I'm going to separate the yolk from the egg white. Woohoo! I'm going to whip the mixture so that it gets foamy. Next, we're going to shape the four cloud eggs onto the tray. It's time to pour the egg yolk into each cloud egg. We did it. And now we're going to eat our cloud egg. So the texture is very nice. On the top you can see it it didn't burn, but it's like light brown, kind of golden-ish, and it's very foamy. On the bottom it's nice and soft, and this egg is pretty hard. Like it, it doesn't seem like you can break easily. But I'm gonna take a bite. The last thing we're going to make is the edible spheres. The main ingredients we'll need are juice, in this case grape juice, and unflavored gelatin. Next, I'm going to open the squeeze bottle, which is included in your box. What I have to do now is carefully pour this mixture. This gel, ooh, it's sticky. 
this gelatin and grape juice mixture into here. We have a container filled with vegetable oil and ice around it to keep it cold. So now I'm going to pour drops into the vegetable oil and they're going to form spheres. Oops. No, that's fine. And now we have our grape spheres with vanilla ice cream. First, I'm gonna have it on its own. It tastes exactly like what the liquid is supposed to taste like, just in a jello-y form. It tastes just like grape juice. <laughs> it really just adds texture. Mm, not bad. We have taken the magic chocolate flan cake out of the fridge, flipped it over, and this is what it looks like. Okay, do you wanna try it first? I'll do the pudding part first. It tastes like what I expected because uh, yesterday I smelled the mix and it tastes just like that. I think that this cake is probably my favorite out of all of them. Mm -hmm. I guess the nacho cheese dip could be nicer if we added pepper or some other ingredient to it because it was basically just cheese. Um, for our clown eggs, the presentation was really good and I liked how it turned out and how I was able to successfully crack all the eggs. But I think if I were to just eat it, I like regular eggs better. And for the edible spheres, I guess my only complaint is that when you squeeze it, you might not get perfect balls and some might stick together. And as for this cake, I think this is my favorite because it has chocolate and flan, and those are two things that I like. Overall, compared to the other food boxes that are out there, America's Test Kitchen is more like a science experiment because you get to see what happens when you mix certain things together or when you, for example, when you add sodium citrate. Or, citrate. Or if, uh, when you add the cream of tartar. Like, it will do things to the food. And they explain it in the information section. So you get a whole science lesson out of it, and you get to eat the results. And I give it my signature thumbs up. Ding! Once again, you can subscribe to America's Test Kitchen at the link in the description. Bye. And bye.